Welcome to video number two for Control Shift Enter Mastering Excel Ray Formulas DVD. Hey, we're on the topic sheet in the workbook or Ray Formula DVD book start.xlsm. Of course, you can get this file from the DVD or download it. Hey, I'm on the topic sheet and I'm going to scroll down. We're in video number two. By the way, video number one is the basics of formulas. Right, and for this is an advanced formula DVD with lots of advanced examples, and you might be tempted to skip over it, which is okay. But there are some points in here that kind of help set the table for the rest of the videos. So here we are. We're on to video number two. Now this video is going to be in an introduction to array formulas, and we're going to see our first array operation. It's going to be a math operation. All right, let's click on sheet number, uh, the link for sheet number two, and now I'm on sheet two. Now, before we uh, define some terms and whatnot, I want you to look over here and notice there's some blue text that says array formula one, two, three. As we go through all these videos, one of those important points, we're going to create a rule. And all of these rules are over on sheet 15. So if I click on sheet 15, here are all of the rules, including a little bit more detail with examples and video references. So when we define what um, an array formula is here in just a moment, this sheet lists the, the basic definition, but also has examples with video reference. So this sheet 15 is a nice, nice summary of uh, much of what we're going to do. I'm going to go back to sheet number two. Now, let's start off here. Well, if we're talking about array formulas, we better define what an array is. It's simply a collection of two or more items. Now in Excel, what does this mean? Well, you can either have a reference, which we deal with all the time, right? Range of cells, define names, or other references such as worksheet or workbook references. So an array in Excel, one or more items? Well, certainly we've dealt with ranges, right? We can also, in Excel, have an array created by a formula element which we'll talk about um, in our first example here. And then for the, the rest of the videos, all of our array formulas will have arrays created by uh, a formula element or a formula itself. And finally, we can have an array constant. Now, last video number one, we saw an example of an array constant. And we'll see examples of array constants as we move forward. Now, what is an array formula? Pretty straightforward. A formula that performs an operation on an array of items instead of a single item. Now, most of us are used to you know, this cell minus this cell. And that's our formula, right? A single item, math operation, single item. But anytime you do an operation on mo more than one item, you have jumped in to the realm of array formulas. And that'll be our definition of an array formula. Now, what kind of operations? Well, we could have math operations, which is what this video is about. Comparative operations, join operations, and even function argument operations. Now, an array formula, the final result uh, from an array formula can either be a single value or an array of values. Now, most of the formulas are going to be single values, but occasionally you'll have array formulas where you get an array of values and you need to enter them into multiple cells. So we'll see how to do both of those. All right, let's scroll down. Well. A formula, our definition is a formula that performs an operation on an array of items instead of a single item. So let's just start with what we know and look at a uh, regular formula that calculates on single items. And then from that, we'll derive our array formula. So we want to look at an, a non array formula that operates on single values. So our formula goal here is to calculate change in stock value. So we have some Google stocks. All right, so basic formula equals one cell to the left minus two cells to the left. Close minus open, Control Enter, double click that little fill handle with your angry rabbit, and send it down. This is something we do every day. We create an extra column. We have each one of the stock changes. Now, if our ultimate goal is to find the maximum stock change, we can look through this column using the max function. Now, there's a bunch of functions that are called aggregate functions, sum, average, max. And all they do is you have uh, an argument here. You simply can highlight a range of cells. Now, a range of cells 
is technically an array, right? It fits our definition. We have more than one values. But the max function is programmed to handle ranges. It looks at all the values, calculates a single answer. So this is not an array formula. But there we go. We have our end result, 6.78. That is the biggest stock change over the, the period we're looking at. Regular uh, formulas. But now, what if you were either not allowed to have an extra column like this, your data setup restricted the use of extra columns, and you still wanted to see the max value, or let's say you have no interest whatsoever in the individual values, you just want the final answer, right? That's where the array formula comes in. So we can come down here, and actually before we calculate our array formula, let's look at this column here. Now I'm going to click in F21 and then use the F2 key to put it in edit mode, F2. Now notice, cell minus cell, enter F2, cell minus cell, enter F2, enter F2. I'm going to do that again, but in high speed mode. And notice that it sort of looks like blue column minus green column. Right? They're individual cells, but notice Ultimately, we had to take this column minus this column, get the answers which are displayed in cells, and then use the max function. So if you're not allowed to have this column or you're not interested in the values, you can just skip right over all of this and do it all in one formula in a single cell. So you ready? Well, we've got to use the max function, so max. And I'm not going to use this. I'm going to use the source data. So I'm going to say close minus open. Now notice what is that? That is a range of values, which is an array. Math operation, another range of cells. So it fits our definition. There's an operation being performed on an array. Now let's take a look at uh, what this formula element right here is producing. Now, you can either highlight or you can always click on the screen tip uh, link here, boop, and it highlights the array operation. Now, I'm going to use my F9 key, which is the evaluate key, and check this out. Now, notice these the formula is referencing the source data, data, not these cells. When I hit F9, boom, whoa. It actually calculated a column of values directly in the formula. It's not looking there, but it got the same answers. 2.73, minus 8.21, et cetera. Absolutely amazing. So what this tells us is anytime we have a helper column like this, if we're not allowed to really have it, we can simulate it inside our formula. Now I'm going to Control Z. So this is an array format. Oh, notice when I click F9, these that formula element is creating an array of values inside the formula and then delivering those values to the max function. Now I'm going to control Z. So this is an array formula. Now, there are about 400 functions. There are a number of functions that are programmed to handle array calculations. And we'll talk about those in a later video. But many, most of the functions cannot handle array calculations. So if I hit Enter, you're like, what? Value error. Now, actually, that value error is Excel being polite. It's saying, hey, you forgot to do, use the special keystroke to enter this format. All right, so you ready? F2. Anytime you have an array calculation and it's not in the sum product, lookup, aggregate, or index functions, those are the four functions that can um, are programmed to handle array calculations. Anytime you have that situation, you have to use the special keystroke, Control, Shift, and Enter. So I'm going to put this formula in the cell. I'm holding Control, Shift, and then tapping Enter. That Control Shift Enter is you telling Excel that you want to do an array calculation. Immediately, you can see Excel got it right. And check this out. I can come up here and Alt EAA. All of that is gone, but I got my answer. That is amazing. Control Z to undo that. All right. We did Control Shift Enter to tell Excel that this is an array formula, but now look up in the formula bar. See those curly brackets? We didn't type those in. Excel put those in. That's Excel telling you, 
I understood that this was an array calculation. You cannot type those in. It's just Excel puts those in automatically whenever you do Control Shift Enter. All right, that's pretty amazing. That's our first array formula. Up here, an array minus an array, it creates an uh, array of values that then get delivered to the max function, and boom, there's our answer, 6.78. Now, let's talk about what happens if you don't use this special keystroke. I want to come down here. Always a bunch of good notes here, including some formula rules here. Number 10 here, if you forget to do Control Shift Enter, one of two things happen. So I'm going to recreate this formula here, max. I'm going to say close minus open, and then close parentheses, just enter, right? So obviously, value error is one of the things. If you see a value error, immediately just go, oh yeah, I forgot, put it back in edit mode, and then use Control Shift and Enter. Now I'm going to F2 and then Enter and keep that a value error. That's one of the possibilities. Let's copy this in edit mode, Control C, and I'm going to click Escape. And come down here, Edit Mode, Control V, same formula, Enter. Huh? What? It gave me a number. Control V, Enter. A different number. Well, that one's right. Um, edit Mode, Control V, same formula, Enter. What is going on here? Control V, Enter. Sometimes I'm getting weird different numbers. Other times I'm getting value errors. Here's the rule. If your array formula is entered without control shift enter and it is not next to the actual source columns notice this is not next to the source columns whereas these are directly next to it this one is not next to it anytime the array formula is entered without control shift enter and it's not next to the data set it gives you a value error anytime it's next to the data set it gives an answer but it's almost certainly going to be incorrect. This is called implicit intersection. Now I want to come over here and remind ourselves how we did this calculation uh, with a helper column or longhand. Control Enter and then drag it down. Now notice, if you do that, you get the individual values. And that's what implicit intersection does. So when I enter this without Control Shift Enter, I'm going to Control Enter. And look up here, you don't see those curly brackets. So it gives me just the answer as if I had done a single cell formula. There's the correct answer, right? There's an answer. The problem with this is people, especially when they're learning array formulas, they enter it without Control Shift Enter and they think they got the answer. But it's not the correct answer. Only in one particular time from implicit intersection will it give you the correct answer. Not correct. So be aware that you either can get, you can sometimes get an incorrect answer from implicit intersection, but don't be fooled by it. Always look up in the formula bar and make sure those curly brackets are there. If they're not, either implicit intersection or value error. All right, let's scroll down here. Now, you might be asking, which method is better, the helper column or the array formula? Well, the answer is, of course, it depends. If you want to see all the detail, right, then the helper column is great. If you weren't allowed to have this extra column, or you didn't care about all the detail, then maybe the array formula would be the best option. So the answer, of course, is it depends. Now, this is our first look at a helper column. In later videos, we'll see that helper columns sometimes really can be the best method in particular on really large data sets where you have a lot of formulas in your workbook. Calculation of formulas, the actual time to calculate can be very slow. And so helper columns sometimes can really help speed up calculations. And we'll talk about that in later videos. But helper column, array formula, the answer is it depends. Now let's scroll down here. In this video, we saw math the math operation subtraction. Moving forward in uh, other videos, we'll see all of these other math operations done on arrays. Now we want to end this video about with talking about the benefits, drawbacks, and some considerations for array formulas. Now the benefits of array formulas, well, we saw here, right, we had a single cell, this 
single cell formula, right? If your situation was you were not allowed to add an extra column like this, then the array formula method becomes the best. So the benefits. Given a desired formula result in situational demands, array formula is the best option. Now another way to say this is array formulas can sometimes achieve what no other Excel method can achieve. And we'll see some examples of that in later videos. Really it, it opens up, array formula opens up a whole set of possibilities that aren't there if you don't know uh, how to use array formulas. Now that's skipping over VBA because VBA is really the most powerful. You can do anything with VBA. A second benefit, save spreadsheet space. Take multiple column solutions and re reduce them down to a single formula. Now we saw a simple example here. Later we'll do a standard deviation for a portfolio of stocks example. And we'll see that that really takes a bunch of steps and intermediate columns. So sometimes you really want to skip over all those columns and just have a single cell solution. And an array formula is perfect for that. Uh, a third benefit, uh, make it hard to delete formulas. Now this example we'll see in video 8 is when you enter uh, an array formula into multiple cells using Control Shift Enter. Now it's not much of a benefit because there's other ways to uh, prevent people from de or deleting your formulas, but we'll see an example in video 8 and actually in video 7 too of that benefit. Now drawbacks. The biggest drawback to array formulas is they may slow down formula cal calculation time for the entire spreadsheet. This is particularly a concern when the spreadsheet contains many formulas and a large number of cell references and calculations. Now going forward through this video series, we will look at some huge data sets and actually time different formula solutions and talk about this in great detail because it, it is a concern. You don't want to fill your spreadsheet up with lots of array formulas without considering if there's maybe a better way to do that because it can really slow down calculation. Another drawback, array formulas sometimes require special keystroke control shift enter, right? And if you forget, you might get the wrong answer. Another consideration or drawback is that other users of the spreadsheet may have a hard time using array formulas. They might not know anything at all about this array formula. They put the cell in edit mode, hit enter, and they're like, why is there a value error? And finally, a drawback is there's not much information available about array formulas out there, at least compared to pivot tables and charts. There's lots of stuff, lots of information available about how to do those things, but there's not so much information about array formulas. All right, number 16, uh, actually the most important kind of overall governing point of this video series. When considering the use of array formulas, always consider whether other methods would be more efficient. Is there a built-in function that can do the same thing more efficiently? We'll see great examples of that later. Could we use a helper column? We'll see examples of that. Could we use helper cells? We'll see examples of that. Could we use filter, advanced filter, or pivot table to achieve the same goal without using array formulas? We'll see examples of that going forward. For spreadsheets that contain many formulas and large number of cell references and calculations, you may need to time different formula options to see which one calculates significantly faster or which one's the most efficient. And we will do that in, in later videos. And then, of course, uh, could you do it with VBA code? Uh, that is beyond the scope of this book. Now, as we progress through these videos, we'll consider all of these, the benefits, drawbacks, and alternatives for each array formula that we look at. All right, uh, next video, number three, we'll talk about an array calculation using comparative operators. All right, see you next video.